Good morning, everybody. In today's lesson, we're going to be talking about inverse trig functions. Um, please have your unit circle handy. We are going to be glancing back and forth for a little bit until we figure out how to do inverse trig functions without a unit circle. All right, so let's start with a question. What angle has, or angles, um, have a sine value of a half? So really quick, we're going to look back at our unit circle because we do know that our sine of a half means, well, the sine value is the y value, technically, on the unit circle. So we're going to look at the y values where there's a half in the unit circle. So here's my quick unit circle. Um, well, that's 0. That's a half. So pi over 6 would be one of our answers. That's an angle where that's happening. So I'm going to go ahead and write over that, pi over 6. Um, now in degrees, so I'll put all the answers here in degrees. It, it is 30 degrees. Let's go back. Uh, not it, not it, not it, not it, not it. Oh, here's another one. 5 pi over 6 or 150 degrees will also be another answer. And let's kind of go around the circle, see if there's any other ones. These are negative. That doesn't work. These are negative, so that doesn't work. Um, therefore, those are the two, but the funny thing is I can name 30 degrees if I wanted negative 330 degrees or negative 11 pi over 6. So I can even say this is negative 330 degrees at that spot or negative 11 pi over 6. So what I'm trying to say is it seems like there's more than one answer um, and when we ask that question we want the calculator will only give us one answer, so we want to know what kind of answers are they giving us. Now, um, tomorrow when we do this stuff, what we want to do is put restrictions, and I want to go over the restrictions today. Um, inverse sine, so imagine this unit circle. When we do inverse sine, meaning when we ask ourselves what are some of the angles um, where there's a sine of a certain number, the answers we want, we want them to be in either quadrant 1 or quadrant 4. So basically we limit our angle, which we'll call it theta, to be between the two numbers. And those numbers are between negative pi over 2, which is the same thing as negative 90 degrees, to pi over 2, which is what I just highlighted here. Okay, so technically we're going from 90 degrees here to negative 90 degrees is what negative pi over 2 and pi over 2 mean. Now, um, which means that our answers are going to be limited as well. That means our answers for the sine of theta, which is what we're going to be answering, will have to be between the numbers negative 1 and 1 because the highest it could be is 1 right here and the lowest it could be here is negative 1 for the y values. All right. Now, inverse cosine works a little bit differently. So let's imagine that this is the unit circle. Uh, for the inverse cosine, the answer should be between quadrant 1 and quadrant 2. So basically between 0 degrees or 0 radians to 180 degrees or pi radians. So our theta will have to be between 0 and pi which means our cosine theta will have to be between, remember cosine is the x value, so we're either going to the right one or to the left negative one. So it has to be between negative one and one as well. Now the inverse tangent is similar to t, and Ms. Dorvik has this cool trick, and you'll see it in the bottom, it says, Sine and tangent are the same, and they come next to each other in the alphabet. That's a way to remember that they have the same quadrants. So 1 and 4 will be the quadrants. Um, so once again, we're going from from negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. So from 90 degrees, which is pi over 2, to negative pi over 2. And for the tangent of theta, the limitations will be between negative infinity to infinity. So all numbers are okay to have. All right. So really quick, once again, in, remember Mistorvik's 
abbreviations sine and tangent are next to each other in the alphabet and notice that they use the same quadrants so they're both using one and four they're both using one and four inverse is the only one that's using one and two all right let's head on down now we're going to go ahead and evaluate these expressions in both radians and degrees and i'm going to uh, kind of show you using the unit circle Sorry, I just took a quick pause to kind of set up my screen. All right, so here what it says is sine inverse of root 3 over 2. Basically what they want from us is to know what angle, so what angle, what theta, is the y value root 3 over 2. And we know it's the y value because we're talking about a sine here. Okay, so we're going to kind of go around only to the quadrants that we said we would do. And for a sine, the quadrants that we were looking at, if you remember looking above, were only 1 and 4. So I'm just going to kind of go around and look at the y values. The y value here is 1. Here it's root 3 over 2. So therefore, the angle that we're talking about, and it says express it both in degrees and radians. So the angle here would be pi over 3 or we can call that 60 degrees. It's the same place. And I'm just going to kind of look around just to kind of show you, look, all the other ones do not match up in those quadrants, so this would be our answer. Isn't that pretty easy? Now, you won't get to have the unit circle, so we do have to work on that. All right, let's do a couple more with the unit circle, and we'll kind of get rid of it afterwards. All right, cosine inverse of 2 just means what angle has an x value of 2. That's that's a question that it's asking all through using symbols. So we want to know where is the angle where the cosine is 2 in the unit circle. Well, let's kind of look at it. Cosine is the x value, so here's 0, a half, root 2 over 2, root 3 over 2, 1, root 3 over 2, root 2 over 2. Oh, sorry, going the wrong way. Remember, I just said the cosine is supposed to be only in quadrants 1 and 2. And I was looking at the wrong quadrants, so let's do that again. 1, root 3 over 2, root 2 over 2, a half, 0, negative 1 half, negative root 2 over 2. Not seeing the 2 that I want, so in that case, it's going to be undefined. All right. Let's look at tangent inverse of negative 1. Well, hopefully we remember once again that sine and tangent are the same, so they are in quadrants 1 and 4. And we do know the tangents in quadrant 4. Hold on one second. So we know that here it's 0, here it's root 3 over 3. At 45, it's going to be 1. At 60 degrees, it'll be root 3. And at 0, or I'm sorry, 90, it'll be undefined. So when we're talking about negative 1, we know that this will be located in quadrant 4. Because if it's negative, then it can't be in the positive section. It has to be where there's a sign change. A positive and a negative would create a negative tangent. So we know that the tangent here is negative 1. And the way we say it is since we are going, it matches with the 45, instead of saying, um, 7 pi over 4, we're going to be saying negative pi over 4, which makes it a lot easier for us because we're going in the negative direction. So the theta in this case would be negative pi over 4, or we can see that as negative 45 degrees. All right, let's head on to the next one. All right, the question here is at what x value or what angle, should I say, is the x value, did I just say x? What did I mean to say? You're right, the y value equal to root 2 over 2. So once again, what quadrants are we looking at again? You're also right, 1 and 4. All right, so let's look at 1 and 4. Y values, not it, not it. Here we go. We have the answer. So the angle is going to be at pi over 4, or we call that 45 degree angle. All right, now let's try to do this without the unit circle. 
cosine inverse. At what angle is the x value a half? Well, we know that we are looking for cosine in quadrants 1 and 2. Since we know that quadrant 2 is the negative section, we know that the answer has to be in quadrant 1. The question is, is it 30 degrees or is it 60 degrees? Remember that at 30 degrees, the point is root 3 over 2 a half. At 60 degrees, it's a half comma root 3 over 2. Therefore, we know that the x value is root 2 over 2 here, or I'm sorry, 1 over 2 there. Therefore, it's going to be the angle is at 60 degrees, also known as pi over 3. All right, let's look at f. f, um, it says, what's the sine inverse of 0? Well, we know that sine will be only linked to the first quadrant and the fourth quadrant. And we know that if it's 0, it's got to be one of these crazy ones. Okay? So let's kind of label. This one is located at 0, 1. Uh, the 0 degrees is located at 1, 0. And the nine, uh, negative 90 degrees here will be located at 0, negative 1. Since the sine value is the y value, at what angle is the y value 0? Well, here's the y being 0. So we could label that as theta is 0 radians or 0 degrees. Now, we don't want to say 2 pi because remember that the limitation is between negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. So since uh, 2 pi is not between those two numbers, we can't say 2 pi. All right. What I'd like for you to do is try G and try H. We will definitely go over those in class as soon as you have them done. It should take you a couple seconds. All right. Try it out. See how it goes. All right. Um, once you try those out, I want you to look at example number two. We're going to do one of these together, and the other one you'll do by yourself. So looking at example number 2a, uh, we want to find the measure of angle theta for the triangle shown. So what we're going to do is first solve for theta. So I'm looking at everything from here. Those are my eyes. And if I'm standing right there, this is my opposite side. This would be my hypotenuse because it's once again across from 90. And this right here is my adjacent side. Looking at the information that's given to me, 5 and 9, which is adjacent and hypotenuse, I know that I would have to use a cosine. Cosine of the angle theta equals adjacent 5 over hypotenuse, which is 9. Now to get theta by itself, all we have to do is get rid of the cosine. And to get rid of cosine, we have to use inverse cosine. So we're going to go ahead and do inverse cosine on one side, which means we have to do it on the other side as well. Notice I put it both on the left sides of the equation. So here's cosine canceling with cosine inverse. We are left with theta equals. We have cosine inverse of 5 over 9. Okay. Go ahead and take out your calculator really quick so I can show you where this is. Here's my calculator. Um, to find the cosine inverse, what we are looking for is we're going to go to, notice that cosine is right here. Notice cosine inverse is right above it. So we're going to do second cos, and you'll see cosine inverse, and we're going to do 5 divided by 9. And when we press enter, we should get the answer that we want. Now, I am going to check my mode because that looks like a degree, and I want to make sure it is. So when I go to my mode, my mode was in degrees. Therefore, my answer is in degrees. So therefore, theta equals 56 point, I already forgot, oops, 25 degrees. Now, if I wanted that written in radians, here's what I would have to do. Go to my mode, change my mode to radians. So I'm going to press Enter. That's my way of changing it. And then I'm going to quit out of here. And once you quit, then what you could do is kind of retype your statement. So here's cosine inverse of 5 over 9. Close it up. And then that is your answer in radians. So we would say theta is equal to 0.982. And I 
All right, well, this is our lesson for today. Please don't forget to solve for example number 2B as well as example number 1, G and H. We'll see you tomorrow in class.